Welcome to Really Cool Stuff for the Home podcast, sponsored by HomeWorks. And now with today's show on all the ways to improve your home is your host, Denise Sanchez. Hi, everybody. This is Denise from HomeWorks, Really Cool Stuff for the Home, where we offer the best in categories out there to make your home better, make, make it work better for you. And we were speaking with Perlick last week about the fact that they're a great American company. They've been around over 100 years. In fact, they're family owned. And um, we were talking about undercounter ice makers specifically. But in this segment, I wanted to talk about their other offerings and specifically beer and wine categories. And even some of their new um, offerings uh, the last couple of years they've offered full-size refrigeration that are just unbelievable and um charlie nice to see you again this well, he is from Ma- maple distributing and then um mr um i'm sorry <laughs> the first name <laughs> Wilson Hawkins. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say Watkins. I knew yeah. that wasn't correct. It's combo the names. It works. I'll go by Watkins. That's, okay. that's fine. I I've just been called had worse. A, I just had a senior moment. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> and and again, last week I made him tell us his title because it's a tongue twister. And I'm going to do it again. Your title. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, business development manager and Western regional sales manager. So. So you know a lot of stuff and you know what's in, you know, in the works and you know about the products. And we talked about how, again, uh, you started off with commercial um, Mm -hmm. offerings until about, I think it was about 2002 is when you debuted into the residential market. And you brought in a fascinating array of of, of undercounter refrigeration. And we're going to talk about beer and wine, but I wanted to, to talk about first about the beer dispensers that you have on like stadiums. Isn't mm-hmm. this some type of, of unique uh, where something's in the basement and something's here and there? Can you talk so, about that? Yeah. So I'll give you my best way of trying to explain it from uh, my residential sales experience. But uh, so they call, they're actually called our century systems and our century beer systems. And the reason why they're called that is generally they will be able to pump and dispense beer from over a hundred feet. Wow. Uh, is essentially the way it works. So essentially in most of these stadiums, when you go and get a beer from the concession stands, all those kegs and all those beer lines essentially are run underneath the stadium. So um, for example, we did the Minnesota Viking stadium and we actually had hundred feet of beer lines running underneath the stadium and underneath roadways to the second deck to be able to dispense the beers. And it's all run off of pumps, um, different sort of beer lines um, and it's quite the the world to be involved in just the amount of engineering and um, math and you know all this other stuff is way above my pay grade to understand you know really how it all works but uh, essentially it's just to take our beer dispensers and extract it out a hundred feet so it's pretty cool. And I wanted to bring that up. So this yeah. would give you all a little bit of street cred. <laughs> so an undercounter beer dispenser, that's nothing <laughs> compared to something like that. So you can see how your beer dispensers are just awesome. And yeah. I wanted you to talk about the, the beer dispensers have really uh, become even more popular, very popular in San Antonio because we like mm-hmm. our beer darn cold. You know, <laughs> when it's 102 outside, right, Charlie? That's our so people- absolutely insist on really cold beer but there are a lot of changes in the last decade about beer you know home brewed and that sort of thing can you kind of discuss that and how Perlick has kind of met those needs well I think just uh, Charlie go for it if you want to kick it off so uh, with with Perlick uh, we are again the top end of the market Uh, it's it's not an inexpensive beer dispenser uh, it's not a kegerator, it's a beer dispenser, just right. to clarify that, mm-hmm. that topic. But uh, the, the five-gallon kegs, the slim ponies that fit into our beer dispensers are, are, are what you'll find all your craft beer in. All your home brewers are brewing in five-gallon batches for home brew craft beer. So uh, we're set up to pour 
uh, very, very high grade beer through our beer dispenser. Uh, and I think that's what customers that invest into a Perlick beer dispenser are looking for. They're looking for the ultimate beer experience. Mm-hmm. And that's what Perlick is able to deliver to them. We're, we're talking about, if you really want it super cold, we can run on a nonstop basis at 33 degrees. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's, that's a cold. Yeah, it's super cold. Mm-hmm. So uh, beer freezes at about 28 degrees. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's pretty darn close to freezing the beer. But uh, again, the highest quality beer dispenser designed to pour the best grade of beers that you can buy on the open market. Well, and I think too, is this market has really shown that beer, much like wine, is just as sensitive to temperature variation. And I think old school thinking is, ah, beer is beer. I'll just throw it in the fridge and store it at the same temperature. Everything is stored, <clears throat> built, stored at. And people are always sometimes left disappointed with the way beer tastes. It comes out flat. It's not doesn't taste right, it's skunky, so on and so forth. Uh, and so you know, I think Perlick just really plays into the importance of you got to hold temperature for beer to, and you're free to get that right experience with these beers and craft beers specifically, you know, have to be served at the right temperatures. And you offer a single pump and you have a double pump, right? And then you also have, this is unusual, a 15 inch piece, which would be like a one pony. But I think that is so, if you if you're tight in space like say a home bar that would be awesome 15 inches who doesn't have that love the 15 and we actually have a lot of people that when they put the 15 inch dispenser or we get some markets they'll put them in their secondary entertainment spaces uh and do cold brew coffee even from oh yeah um it's it's really that 15 inch has been one of uh, the dispensing units that i've been surprised on really the, the success of it so this cold brew coffee situation can you kind of explain what's the big deal about that? Uh, for me, I'm not a huge cold brew drinker, so the I'm not a can't tell you too much about that side of it. Um, but I mean, it's really just the the fad of people really wanting that that at home barista type experience. Um, and cold brew coffee is something that you can kind of do at home. You brew your own coffee, you cool it down, and voila, you're good to go. Um, but I think just the convenience of being able to have that on tap at home, um, and in a lot of markets, it's specifically out here in California where I can speak to a little more, um, intelligently and a lot of the little local coffee shops will actually fill up little coffee K graders for you to take or little coffee tins to fill up and dispense at home. It's, um, yeah. I guess I, just I, did, an, I did an experiment on, uh, nitro cold brew coffee, mm-hmm. And I bought the, the nitrogen bottle, the nitrogen regulator. I, I bought a kit to do cold brew. It'll yeah. do five gallons. It'll, it'll do two and a half gallons of cold brew concentrate. And then you dilute that down mm-hmm. with another two and a half gallons of water. And then you uh, nitro infuse uh, that coffee, put it into a homebrew keg. And then when you pour it into a, through the beer dispenser into a glass, it gives you that cascading artistic yeah. effect of all those tiny little nitrogen bubbles mm-hmm. coming through the coffee i mean it's it's a lot of work but i, I do have i do have everything to, to do it i've done it it works and it, yeah. it, it is an experiencing a very interesting experience coffee tastes better when it, it tastes different when it's cold brewed mm-hmm. or nitro it is doesn't have the bitterness factor mm. it still gives yeah. you the coffee flavor but it's not bitter so you, you just right. can't take hot coffee and cool it off and call it cold brew it right. has to be right. brewed over the course of 24 hours basically at room temperature and it's kind of like a uh, kind of like a sun tea so to speak oh wow you know, sun tea would taste different than if you boiled tea bags right. sun tea is a different type of tea and the same thing goes with with cold mm-hmm. brewed or nitro coffee Good comparison. That's interesting. That, yeah. that kind of brings it home a little bit better for me. <clears throat> I, I just still I think I'm going to be liking it hot, but and as long as it has caffeine, I guess I can <laughs> go into Same. it. Yeah. So on the beer dispensers, once again, we have the indoor and we have the outdoor versions mm-hmm. and the 15 inches and the 24 inches. And so say you really don't have a lot of room, but you really want something like this. They have casters so mm-hmm. that you can maneuver it around, you know, to wherever you want to go. I know in my own showroom, I have a 24 inch piece. And as if we have events before COVID, we would move it to certain areas, you know, and we used to have, Charlie used to hook me up a couple of times too and tell him what you would put in my uh, beer dispenser 
Oh, the type of beer? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, well, I, the, the root beer. Oh, well, root beer. Yeah, sure. Root beer is, is, is easy to do. Uh, it's a root beer. You got to be careful with your sanitization because it won't last like a, like a regular alcoholic beer does because an alcoholic beer will, will inhibit pathogenic development inside the beer. So root beer, uh, it doesn't have any alcohol to kill the bugs off. So got to be really careful, but, but, you know, I, I like bringing in micro brews and, and uh, from uh, smaller breweries around town when I, when I serve beer out of dispensers. I know Denise, we've teamed up and taken my beer dispenser that's at my house on casters and yours. And we've taken it to Port Aransas for yeah. the greater San Antonio Builder Association fishing tournament. We were down there with four kegs of beer on tap for everybody. <laughs> nice. It's a lot of fun. And go through it all. So we have yes. a, my two, two in mine and two in yours. And, uh, and we, we poured busted sandal, uh, some of their brews, which is very well received. Awesome. So, um, Anyway, uh, lots of lots of versatility with a beer dispenser, and to get it cold and something that holds up as well as, as well. And it's <laughs> it's a beautiful piece too. And you also have some unique dispensers that you can get. You have the one that comes with you know the standard, but then you have all these unique dispensers. I think that's kind of cool too to, to kind of customize. You know your yeah. We have the the Adara. It kind of looks like a cobra head snake yeah. uh, a little bit, and that's just such a really elegant piece. And yeah. that one's available on a single single or dual tap. I personally love the way the dual tap on that one looks. It just looks really, really sharp and really yeah, good. So beautiful. Yeah. Well, yeah. It adds a little bit of ambiance. Yeah. And speaking right. of ambiance, we're going to talk about wine, my favorite <laughs> wine. So on wine grottos, um, you know, again, we're, we have a lot of different options. You have single zones, you have dual zones, you have 15 inches, 24 inches. You even have full size. Uh, wine grottos. And let's talk a little bit about why we would want different zones for our wines. Well, I think it's important to, to know that red and white should be stored at different temperatures. Um, I think a lot of times most people will store, or traditionally you'll have a single zone unit and all reds and whites are stored at the same temperature. But what we know about wines, specifically reds, reds are traditionally want to be served at you know, or stored at 60 to 65, whites will be 50 to 55. Um, so there's a, a bit of a range in how they should be stored. Um, and wine, like we, you know, we're talking a little bit about beer, but wine is one of their biggest enemies is temperature fluctuation and not being stored properly. Um, if you talk a lot of consumers, you know, about their wine tasting experiences when they go to a winery and they taste the wine, oh my God, it tastes amazing. And then they go home and they taste that same wine. They're like, nah, it still tastes fine, but not as great as when I was at the winery. What's the key difference is, well, it's the way the wine was served, what it was stored at. So if you're storing it properly, you're going to still get that same sort of experience that you would if you were tasting. Um, so again, that's the importance of having those those zones properly. That's why it's when we're talking to consumers about wine units is, okay, what are you storing in it? Are you going to store reds and whites? Well, we should really look at a dual zone. If you're only going to store whites, then single zone's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really important for that temperature um, at the end of the day. And then also, again, we have the 15 inch and 24 inch. Yeah. Uh, on the full size, now, if you have like, say a collection, um, mm -hmm. and you're trying to store wines to wait till the, they mature to their best. That's a good option is to do the, um, the larger versions. Um, yeah. Talk about your big uh, uh, version that you have. Yeah. Yes, that's so awesome. those are really exciting pieces. Uh, so we launched about a year and a half, two years ago, the 24 inch wine or Perlick wine reserves, um, single and dual zone. And what's really cool about our units is they actually can be um, freestanding. Technically, we can right. install them with side panels, so they don't necessarily always have to be built into cabinetry. Um, but in those units, like we said, we have single and dual zones. What's really amazing about these units is we don't just monitor the temperature, but we also monitor and maintain humidity. And that's one of the other major things that when we talk about wine preservation is really important is maintaining the right humidity levels. Uh, it's about 65% or um, I have my percentages off, just my brain just frazzled a little bit. Um, but you have to maintain 75% relative you. humidity. humidity. It's for and pork reason, health. 
cork health. Cork and label health um, to ensure that the labels don't dry out or the corks exactly. don't dry out or over. And that's actually when you talk about the long term preservation and people are buying those wine reserves because you're protecting an investment. Mm -hmm. Those wine reserves are going to protect your investment with that humidity control, making sure the temperature is held right. And even the shelving, it goes on, cradles those bottles perfectly. So when they open and close, Bottles aren't sliding around. Right. Uh, and then lastly, you can set the whole unit into um, uh, cellar mode, which essentially is 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's what wine uh, aficionados and sommeliers all recommend for long-term storage for all wines. So, so you know, the machine actually takes up uh, for, for the, the, the column units. It's really important to understand the humidity uh, control that the uh, Perlick wine column has. It's nobody else has anything like it. We'll right. actually take, and when a refrigerator runs, it's a wine refrigerator or a, a, a beverage center or a regular refrigerator. The air on the inside is always very, very dry because the action of the cooling system strips the moisture out of the air and then, and then it, it drains it away. So what Perlick does is it does the same thing. It's going to strip the moisture out of the air. It's going to drain it away, but then it reintroduces that same moisture back into the environment. So we maintain that 65 to 75% relative humidity. So a wine, a cork on a wine won't dry out. So as these corks dry down, eventually they uh, will allow air to enter into the wine and that wine spoils at that point. Mm -hmm. So with a Perlick, you have the best shot of any unit on the market to be able to store a wine for 20 years inside yeah. of, of a Perlick. We're, we're talking about the commercial side <clears throat> for our beer systems. Mm -hmm. The same thing with our wine. A lot of restaurants use our, actually even our wine reserve columns to store their wine, their champagne. And as many of us know in the restaurant world, where do they make most of their profits and revenue? It's from their alcohol sales, their wine sales. So if not that this is kind of weird, but if Gordon Ramsay's or Fleming Steakhouse can trust a Perlick wine column to protect their investment of all that wine that they're serving, the customers should feel pretty well uh, protected as well in their home at the end of the day. Yeah, you can go into a Fleming's and they mm -hmm. store all of their champagne and all their whites inside the same wine column that you can have at home. And, and Denise, you have one of these wine columns on yep, display in the showroom. Oh, yeah, so people nice. Come in and take a look at them. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing about the wine, our wine column and, uh, and, and in wine columns in general, what you'll see on other brands is a lot of usage of wood on the inside, wood shelves, wood fronts. I, I don't know why that is. Maybe back in the in the 30s and 40s in caves in France, they used wood crates to hold wine bottles. And for some reason, uh, other manufacturers think they need to have a wood look on the inside of their units. Perlick is totally stainless steel and powder coated stainless steel on the inside of their wine columns. We're sanitary. We don't, we're not going to introduce any kind of off-gassing from wood products or biological growths on the wood pieces on the inside. So it's a sterile, more of a sterile environment, more conducive to long-term storage of wine. And when okay. we're talking stainless steel, we're talking about the interior cabinet as well, mm. not just the shelving, and but the interior cabinet. And it's yeah. stunning looking too. You know, when you, you know, part of the thing about wine, I always say is the ambiance. Like I would never want to drink a, a great glass of wine, you know, out of a red cup. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter the, the type of glass that you have, but it's part of the ambiance of wine to have that, you know, pop in the cork, to have the, the beautiful label. You know, the labels, they go through a lot of effort to make these labels beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, when, with vineyard, when, you know, all that. But um, these are stunning uh, wine reserves. They really are. And on investment wine, sometimes when you buy a wine, a wine needs to mature and it may be several years before it's really ready to drink. So yeah. where you store it at is really important. People don't understand that. They, uh, some people I think, think of wine grottos, you know, I'll talk to them uh, what they're looking for in a wine grotto. And really they're just looking for a place to temper their wines, you know, or ready to drink. You know, a wine grotto is meant to store and hold your wine and protect your wine from humidity um, temperature fluctuations, UV, and vibration. And further to that on your shelving, oh my gosh, it's like smooth as silk. When you pull out those ball bearing glides, I mean, it doesn't, there's no rattling, there's no shifting, it's smooth as silk. Yeah. 
Well, I think you're spot on with just the shelving alone. You look at some of the other wine units out there, they'll have metal shelves and what that does to the labels and the bottles and I'm shifting around, you nailed it with the agitation of what that does to that wine. Um, and, and so, only thing, uh, go ahead. I was just saying, the only thing I was mentioned is just on the, the looks of the unit is, I wanted to just comment of, you know, with the blue lighting that we have, oh, yeah. um, you put a glass door and put the blue light on these perlic units. When that door's closed and that blue light illuminates those That's bottles beautiful. of wine in there, it is stunning. And to top it off is we have a little display rack that's yeah. in the middle of our units and you can pop it up and put, I mean, who doesn't want to show off their nice bottles right. of wine? Pop them up, show them off, and actually even gives you a little space on the back and to put some of your ports if you want. But yeah, they're stunning pieces, absolutely. And, and then there's another category, the beverage refrigerator. Now, this is for that customer that I was just talking about, that really they don't understand the, the, about holding wine, or that's not really what they want. They want a place to hold some wine so that when they want to go drink it, it's ready to drink. And then they want a place for the beer and a place for some water, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that's where your beverage refrigerators come in. Those are awesome. And you offer those in 15 and 24 inches as well. <laughs> So they typically have, tell them about that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so beverage centers, you know, we've got a um, couple options on those. Um, with those, it's your, your spot on. It's really asking the customer what they're looking for and what they're really using the units for. Because if they're just looking to store kind of generically any sort of beverages, uh, not necessarily wine, but beer, whatever kind of fits in, then yeah, beverage center makes sense. But if they're going to be more specific and I, I really want to store wines in there and the other part, I don't really care, or I'm going to store wine in one part and dairy in another. Well, let's look at our dual zone unit, the beverage center unit that gives you the wine up top and refrigeration down below, Right. That's um, which is kind of that similar, but the it's a beverage center type piece, but it's really what people are looking for. Uh -huh. The beverage center at the end of the day, a little bit of store, uh, history around the creation of that category was... Um, there aren't really strong restrictions and energy restrictions and temperature restrictions initially on beverage centers. They used to all just be called dorm refrigerators. That's what everybody remembers them on. Then it transitioned to just being called beverage centers, um, and which is actually kind of unique for us because our refrigerator units are actually food rated safe. Um, so again, I, I mentioned all that because it's important to ask the customer the right questions and what they're really using the unit for. Because if you're gonna just store beverages, beverage center is perfect. But if you're really just focused on wine, something else specific, let's look at that dual zone unit right, right, uh, and so right. on and so forth. And I understand, I know that your units are very quiet. In fact, you have them in a very, very famous hotel nearby your operation. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so um, we've got a number of hotels in the Milwaukee area that have, uh, one's actually an old Paps Blue Ribbon uh, distillery um, that they've converted over to hotels. So really, really cool. Very cool. Um, there. Yeah, you have. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, like that, and yeah. so before a competitor of ours used to be in a lot of these hotel rooms bedside. Um, there were issues with noise. And so in return, they swapped them and put the Perlick products in there. Um, and the Perlick products have just are a lot quieter. Um, biggest thing too, is when we look at our signature series, the variable speed compressor makes these things just so quiet um, because they really don't have to turn on unless they absolutely have to turn on. Um, the units are rated at 41 decibels in a standard room when it's running full blow. So that's the loudest it gets. Um, and that's virtually, I mean, that's what your phone vibrates maybe. Yeah. So another unique offering, an industry exclusive is your, they call them the Saudis, the 18 inch depth wine grottos. Oh my gosh. So if you have like say an island and you're running out of room, you put the microwave drawer and you put the ice machine, you're running out of room. But if you've got 18 inches, you could have this. Talk about that one. That 18 inch wine reserve is a home run piece. Um, so rather than your bottles of wine going front to back, they go side to side. So they did a great job of just kind of reconfiguring the shelf to accommodate it. Um, and yeah, it is 18 inches deep. Um, ADA compliant. It's actually, we call it's uh, pronounced Sotil, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Italian for shallow. Oh, okay. um, I will tell you this is that word so teal will be going away and we will just be calling it 18 inch shallow depth, uh, trying to just be <laughs> real clear about it. Um, <clears throat> jokingly, you know, it's an Italian word, but we're yeah. not Italian. So a little yeah. bit weird, but I, all kidding aside, but it's a beautiful piece. Uh, the 18 inch, uh, again, to your point, can go right at the end cap of an island without being intrusive and having to find, and that's what I love about that 18, 18 inch piece is the amount of opportunities and areas that it opens up where you can put right. a unit uh -huh. exponentially uh, open up. I've even seen it uh, built into a credenza in the living room. They had oh, two yeah. pieces. Charlie, you know what I'm talking about, right? Downtown. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yep. It's, it's a stunning piece. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a great place it's just stunning. I was very yeah. impressed with how they use that space. Applications where you can't get a standard 24 inch deep unit to fit mm -hmm. the Sotil piece is a uh, natural uh, for use of those applications. Six right. inches of depth is a big difference. That's for sure. Especially with the, urban, like the urban living or exactly. the yeah. modern kitchen, the smaller yeah. loft type kitchens. They don't have a lot of that space. This and space I actually strange. like the way that the wine bottles are displayed on its side. Yeah. I think it's prettier because you can yeah. see the wine bottles like that. Now, our, our, dealers that uh, our dealers that do cabinetry uh, really uh, get excited when they learn that there's an 18 inch deep product right. available yeah. because they've, they've come across challenges in trying to utilize an under counter refrigerator in some of their cabinet applications or simply isn't enough space. And then I wanted to talk about the newest offerings, your full-size refrigeration. And you really are starting to have some different, uh, more options with the columns. This is a big turnaround for you guys. Um, I think from being only an undercounter to now offering these wonderful pieces, you know, full-size. Can yeah. you kind of expand on that? Yeah, so um, Perlick has expanded our built-in column portfolio a little bit uh, over the last year. So we first launched our columns, we had 24 inch only. Um, and just recently we've launched, or just last year, the 30 inch column on refrigerator. Um, what we love about these pieces is, you know, we're still using that same commercial technology, the same heritage, full stainless steel, um, and the same sort of quality and performance that you found in undercounter, you're going to find that in our full size columns now. Um, and really, you know, we're a piece that because what we're finding with a lot of people's homes is the entertainment areas are expanding. You're not just putting a fridge in your kitchen, you might have a secondary fridge in your bar area. So we're finding that, you know, one, we're, we're, we're under counter refrigeration experts. And so expanding into columns was a, a made sense for us to continue that path. Um, and we're, we're just excited about the opportunity to be selling columns and, and being in that world. And the 30 inch, um, again, great piece back to the preservation or what we talk about with our beer dispensers and our wine reserves around preservation. Our fridge has that same story um, around trying to be sustainable um, to preserve the life of the products that are in there exponentially longer. Much like we talked about humidity control in the wine reserves, our refrigerators have that same thing with our produce bin where we actually can introduce moisture and pull out moisture. Um, our lettuce and our units will average about 30 to 60 days longer than some of our competitors out there. We've had a head of lettuce in our fridge for 90 days oh and goodness. it held up perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because of that humidity control. Um, so our sustainability story, and a kind of a little side note, doesn't just go to the fact that we use R600 and it's a more energy and environmental friendly, but also the way our products perform in terms of maintaining and, and preserving the food that's in there. Um, so each of the, you know, uh, it's actually four zones, quattro pool is what we call it. So each of them are independently controlled and monitored. So whatever you have in your top zone, gonna be maintained and properly, whatever you have in your deli or your fish, or your uh, produce bin, all going to be monitored independently um, and treated uh, to, to really to, at the end of the day, to ensure the, the prolonged life. And they're beautiful too. Then they yeah. have that stainless steel interior. The only thing I wish, can I give you my wish list? I, Let me guess. What? 18 inch? Well, no, I uh, wish that I could get a glass door on the fridge side. Uh, that was my second guess. <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. I do like that. And I, yeah. and I have a lot of customers that request that, 
you know, that they want, you know, if they're doing a kind of a pro style kitchen or they just want a, something snazzy looking, they look at the under counter, they love the glass doors, and then they want to bring that to their upright fridge as well. And I just wonder if they're ever going to do that. We have stuff in the, the works to to develop stuff like that um, to make that because we've heard it from the market when we first launched it and even more so when the 30 got launched is people yeah. asking about that glass door option um, and we're it's on our list of stuff to get done and uh, out the door for y'all um, mm-hmm. on that same note you know even looking at expanding that column portfolio as the years oh, go on as well yeah. um yeah. with more options uh-huh. specifically around like beverage centers and things like that right, so right, right. um the, what you see with pearly columns is just the taste of uh what's to come yes well and i think you all have done very well when i flip through the book of all the products mm-hmm. people this is what oh my gosh i cannot believe they have all these different models you know different types you know dual zones um even on fridge freezer drawers you know to have a fridge on top and a freezer below in a drawer that's yeah. a great great yeah. piece. Mm-hmm. you know uh, how many people couldn't use something like that you know to, yeah. to um, add to your existing refrigeration so there yeah. was the, and then they're beautiful they're beautiful pieces they're the fit and finish on them They've done a great job on that. And the fact that you can put wood doors, you can have mm-hmm. solid doors. So on a wine grotto, you can have a solid stainless steel door. You can have a solid panel door. You can have a stainless uh, frame on glass door. You can do a panel uh, frame on glass door. A lot of different options, you know, left and right hinge. You can even stack these guys. I've yeah. done that. Oh my gosh. So I had one customer where she did... Um, uh, the drawers on the bottom and then she did the glass doors on top she got her glass oh doors so bridges. cool yeah. yeah and you actually have stacking kits for that yeah. that's very unusual and we've done well, some commercial applications like that yeah. as well. it's funny you mentioned that is we've had some kitchens where they don't do the traditional full upright fridges and freezers all their appliances are under counter or compact type style right. so they're where they're storing their everyday food is in a stacked Perlick unit, which is right. really unique, but it's just showing that people are open to, you know, unique ideas to, to reconfigure their kitchens yeah. to make them work for them. So if you have a 48 inch space and you wanted to have drawers in the bottom and, or maybe a wine grotto on one side and a drawer in the bottom and then something, you know, a fridge or beverage, you could do anything you want oh, yeah. together. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. that's a very unique you know, opportunity to really yeah. customize something specifically for your own needs. <laughs> yeah, you have about 350 plus different Perlick options when it comes to refrigeration. Uh, so if we don't have a solution for you, there isn't one out there for right. you. And, then it's, <laughs> it's, and it's the best, it's the best quality, the best motors, the best built, um, they're beautiful, uh, American made, American company, American family. I mean, a lot of neat things about it. Great, best warranties. And I love this product line. And that's one of the things oh, uh, why we offer your product uh, line is because we want to make your homework better for you at Homeworks. So again, if you go to homeworkssa.com, you'll see our Perlick offerings. And then also Perlick has a wonderful website, um, perlick.com and go into the residential side to see all the different products. They've done a good job of, of, of you know, segmenting, like if you wanna look at ice makers, you wanna look at wine grottos, you can do that. And they do have different series, different price ranges. They have the C series, which is uh, kind of like more, more the basic commercial type, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, with, with electronics, but not as sophisticated as your signature series. And then you even have ADA for those situations where uh, in office, you know, applications or in a home where that might be beneficial or you're u- using European cabinets and you need that different, you know, six inch toe space, they have those as well. So can you believe the time has flown by again? Man, <laughs> thank Goodbye. you so much. Thank you so much for um, co-hosting this with me and, and letting my, um, listening audience know about all the neat offerings that are are available through Perlick. And I thank you so much. Homeworks, we'll make your homework better for you. 